Hello out there and welcome to the ninth episode of my Let's Play Minecraft series. In the last episode we made this enchanting room. Um, we also continued work on the gold farm and we made, it, made a flower shop. We also published a Christmas book uh, in theme of well, Christmas. So in this episode I want to use this space over here and I want to actually build like a court room, like a royal court sort of thing. And I think it'll be really cool. Um, we want the outside and the inside of this castle to be pretty um, nondescript. I mean, we don't want people to be able to recognize things without actually being in the rooms. So you shouldn't be able to spot what room that was without uh, being in here. So we have the walls being all similar all the time. Let me just grab some building blocks here. Need some of those, some of those. Yeah, so we'll probably uh, do like this room in sort of the same style as the, the rest of the stuff. And we'll have like an upset here where the where the king can sit and judge people. And then down here, we'll try to make some, um, like a little uh, podium or something for the, for the person who's being tried to stand on so that he's in view for the whole, uh, whole audience. Right standing, oh, I'm placing all sorts of wrong blocks here. In, in the view of everybody else. I think that's pretty much in the center. Yeah, it, no, it, it's not quite. So I'll fix this, uh, make it in the center. We'll get some some spruce wood. What do, you have? do I have that here? And then we're gonna make sort of another semi-floor, right? This is, or this will contrib contribute to the, to the semi-floor that we have already up there. Uh, where the king can sit, and we'll have some way to get up there. But I think, actually, start. Uh, I al I also want to start doing the secret passages and stuff, and I think that will play nicely with this theme. Um, so I'm I'm probably gonna uh, incorporate some secret stuff uh, already from from this point on. But yeah, let me uh, let me just get to the building, and then uh, I'll show you how it looks when it's done. See you. It is now complete, and I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, if we just walk in here, uh, I couldn't really fit a wall, so it's just part of uh, this big room. It just opens up. Um, but you can see here we have the pedestal, or uh, the stage thing, or the dais, maybe it's called, for the person being tried to stand on here. And he can look up at the king up there. Um, I decided to go for green, because we went for red in there. And we went for sort of a dark purpley red here and then I think green looks pretty good for this um, and yeah you can stand here and look up at the king uh, downstairs here we have like a prisony thing and I know this is not uh, that realistic I just like how it looks um, and it's I wanted to keep sort of a dark and gloomy feel in here so I didn't put real torches I just put redstone torches and I also put in a bit of a trap down here if we open up this chest you can see we're actually locked in here for a little while so it just slows people down a bit if they open this and making them a bit more vulnerable. Uh, I think that should make it hard to check both chests right after each other uh, because then people can hear you here. I left this open so you can see what's going on. So when you open this chest, a redstone signal is, uh, this block is powered, give, uh, extending this piston, putting the redstone block there. And that means that we power this extender that we already talked about in an earlier episode. Uh, but yeah, so this keeps the signal going for a little while, and then that piston pushes this block up. So that's just the entire redstone for that small trap thing. Quite simple, but it, I think it gives a very nice effect. Let's just check that it also works over here. Yeah, no matter how fast you open that chest and close it again, it will go up for the same duration. Um, yeah, and actually, let's let's go upstairs and see how it looks up there. So uh, I didn't show this, but I did a little bit of work also in the on the other side of the castle. It looks similar to this, where there are a lot of chests to search, but no traps or anything. And over here, I think we're going to put the light somewhere else. I don't quite know yet. 
But yeah, uh, in the towers here we have the style uh, by the enchanting room where it's stairs, uh, no ladders, sorry, ladders that you can climb climb up. And to give it a different feel, uh, these two back towers have these uh, slab stairs, uh, which I think will slow you down a little bit. And it also uh, gives a bit more play with the catching each other and and a bit more confusing and you have to hit this if you're busy I think that'll be quite hard which will be fun and so up here we have uh, we can view out and see like if there are any monsters or players and we also have two more chests here of course they're empty now and this gives us access to the other part of the throne room uh, you can see I put a little thing up there I also put one up here uh, they do different things but uh, I'm not going to show you what that that one does just yet. That'll be a surprise for when we actually try it out in a later episode. Uh, but this one over here uh, opens a secret entrance if you're fast enough. I'm very bad at this right now. Yeah, this is a secret entrance where you get into this in-between area and I don't quite know what I'm gonna do with all of this yet. Uh, we do have a lot of space here. That right there is the uh, the small corridor connecting the enchanting setup to the other balcony so we might also move that or do something fun with putting another secret in here or something I don't quite know currently it just gives us access to this which is the other balcony the top part of that this chair is a little bit smaller than the throne room chair uh, although they're both for the king I think when he's in the courtroom, it, it's it's a different function, so I thought the chair should be slightly different. And I might put some more carpet up here, because I think it looks pretty nice. But of course, red carpet for the king again. Uh, and yeah, you can sit up here and judge your subjects down there. And over here we have the other type of tower, which is just ladders. Making you go up here to the empty floor right now. But something will get there very soon. Yeah. So, uh, are there any other secrets that I wanted to mention? Oh yeah, I wanted to show the redstone for the the secret entrance here. Let's just break those for now. And let's go back here. So it's just two pistons and a torch on that block and then a redstone dust. So this block here powers both pistons. That was dumb. Let's just get back up there. Whoa, whoa. Like that. Yeah, so this block here will power both pistons when we put this redstone dust on it, extending them, and then when you click it, of course, they retract. So also a very simple system, but I think it gives a great effect. Uh, it sort of adds a secret and makes it a bit fun, so I really like it. And uh, I think that's it for the base for this episode. So now the time has come, we are going to finish this giant gold farm in this episode. Uh, I'm going to build the last layer and then we're going to build the killing platform and a lot of mechanism stuff, probably some sorting things and a lot of hoppers. We need a lot of stuff, so this is going to be a big project. Uh, I'm just going to show you the whole process from a third person perspective of building the last ring and then... Uh, I'll probably be back to talk a bit about uh, the redstone behind it. So, see you when this ring is complete.
So the third layer is now complete, which means the whole top of the farm, the spawning area is complete. Um, I also put in the drop area down there. You'll notice that it's blocked on the back. And that's because we don't. We actually want to raise the zombie pigmen a little bit before they drop down so that uh, we can build the killing platform a bit uh, higher up so they don't have to fall as far, which will increase the, the gains from it. I'm not going to shoot at them uh, right now because we're actually going to go down here and look. Uh, I already uh, mapped out where they die. This is the lowest, uh, the highest point we can have while still killing all of them. Let's see if I can get over here. And so what we're going to have is we're going to have like a hopper uh, chain here all the way out to the killing area right out here. And we're going to take these out and just put in hopper, hopper and the hopper here and one over here. So now all the drops will be collected by that. And we actually also want uh, to ensure that all the drops don't fly in every direction and the zombie pigment don't move too much. So what we're going to do is just enclose this in some regular stone here. Stone bricks. Like we've used for everything because it's a cheap block. And we need a lot of it. So yeah, and maybe just build it up one more level so that there's no splash of the items don't fall anywhere but but where we want them to go and then we're gonna have this sort of a, a thing right here which i'm gonna build all the way up so that they can't move out of exactly where we, we want them to go um down here uh, the xp will also collect on top of those hoppers which is not uh, not great so what i'm also gonna do is just put in a few Is he mad at me? No. Uh, put in a few trapdoors, not like that. We want to also have access to the to the experience. So down here, I'm just gonna put in three trapdoors to make sure that the XP and the items don't splash all over the place like before. But also now I can go down here and open this to get get all of the XP out of there. Um, if I want So we need to place back that hopper in here in the center uh, I'm gonna build an item sorter and packer system uh, that El Mango did and uh, I'll just gather the resor resources up for that and then uh, I'll be back probably when I've built uh, the first one and then uh, show you a little bit how it works uh, And there will be a link of course in the description but I'm gonna build uh, four of these and then uh, come back to build this order. Okay, so there is one of the modules and it's pretty uh, complicated. I'm just gonna try to show you or explain sort of how it works to the best of my ability. It is uh, of course El Mango's design and he has a video on it that's probably better at explaining it, but I'll give it a try anyway. So up here we have uh, a simple uh, that would be a hopper line going that way. So this is just an item sorter, right? Uh, and this has three redstone dust, which means it's overflow protected. Uh, and it also means we, we need fewer filler blocks, which is important because currently renaming on an anvil isn't quite working in 1.11. Um, yeah, so this up here is just an item filter uh, for for sorting the items so down here it gets uh, quite a bit more complicated let me just go back here so i can point to things so uh, the items will go down through here and then fill into this shulker box when the shulker box is full the items will get stuck in that hopper right there and then that comparator will turn on and when it has enough items i think it's around 22 it that redstone dust out there will turn on and also uh, the same with this redstone dust up here. So when that dust turns on, there's dust right there, this observer gives a tick uh, extending this piston and then that redstone block will move over and extend this piston which will uh, cause this uh, observer to give an output also through this hopper here to these two observers. 
these two observers then get powered and uh, that means these two get powered and this one extends and because this is one tick behind this one will fire right after that uh, putting a new shulker box in its place uh, and the shulker box when the piston extends of course the shulker box is dropped down onto the hopper and goes into this chest down here so that's the chest for empty shulker boxes and that's the chest for the full shulker boxes i think that's about what the circuit does uh, it's very nice and I need to build uh, three more of them because we're going to get three types of items. So we're going to get rotten flesh and we're going to get golden nuggets and we're going to get gold ingots. Uh, I had a lot of thought about uh, if I should void the swords. We're also going to get a lot of golden swords uh, because now you can actually melt them down. But I've decided against it as have every other YouTuber I've seen uh, because it's simply not viable when you get one nugget per a sword and we already get uh, infinitely many nuggets right through the farm so currently it's not worth it if they put set it up uh, so that you get an ingot or something i will go back to this and revise it put a furnace thing auto smelting a source but currently but currently i'm just gonna avoid them so i need to copy this two times over and then put in a voider for the swords then i'll be back and now all of that is done uh, i have three of the I think they're called shulker box loaders. I would rather call them packers because I think they're packed things together into shulker boxes, but whatever. Uh, we have three of them there. I think they're all working. They should be. I also put in all the item filters, and you can see it's very bright right around here. That's because inside there is lava that will void all of the golden swords. All in all, I think it's actually time to test this out to see if the thing is working as it should. What about that guy? So you can see they're all flocking together there and there. Side and they're falling down. Oh, that guy spawned. Nobody should. Oh, there's a spawning place. Otherwise, nothing should be spawned anywhere near here. Uh, hopefully. Also, do zombies actually spawn in the middle? I think so, but nobody. Oh, they can spawn on the hoppers. Oh, we need to put slabs on all of the hoppers. Okay, didn't know that. But we'll just uh, do that uh, when we're done with this test. I think we gathered up quite a few items already. So let's try to go down here. Maybe I should. Try. Our system can already handle rotten flesh, so it shouldn't be a problem. These guys are here. They don't have any armor. Or anything. That guy gonna cause trouble. Go oh, away. Others look like it. So let's see. Uh, oh, there anymore? In here should be the rod of flesh for me. But it is funneling in. Okay. Here should be some golden ingots. And a lot of other stuff. No, the golden nuggets, sorry. The ingots should be in there. So these were here already. I didn't have an empty shulker box for that. And in the middle. And these that. Oh, the middle one should have golden ingots, and we shouldn't have gotten a lot of those there. And, but yeah, it seems like it's working. So that's uh, really nice. I'll go put slabs on these uh, hoppers. We'll call this project complete for now. We might want to do something about the XP someday. But we'll return for that. So, for the book for this episode, I thought we released the second volume of the Creatures series that we've been doing. This one's called Creatures of the Night. I don't know why Night isn't highlighted. It was when I was editing it. Uh, it contains stuff about, you know, overworld um, evil monsters things spiders cave spiders skeletons creepers strays witches all sorts of stuff like that yeah a lot of uh, a lot of nice facts about them uh, of course most of this comes from the wikipedia but i think it's nice to have it in the game if you're actually building a moth farm or something and considering how tall is this or that or you know something like that so we're just gonna put this in the new releases 
Uh, maybe we should make a bit of space so that we can see which ones we're missing. And that's going to be the book for this episode. Okay, so time to build the shop of today. And I've picked out uh, a plot. It's very close to where we are already. It costs eight diamonds, but that's because the build of today is going to be a little bit big. Um, so the plot is this one right next to this iron shop. Uh, it's right over here. This large plot, it's actually very large. And we gotta start, as usual, by taking down the trees here. And also this one, I'm afraid. And then, um, so the shop of today is gonna be like an aquarium-y shop. Uh, or an aquarium, in fact. And so let's just find something that looks like the middle. I think this would be it. And so let's put down some water, just because we're gonna need some water in here we're gonna need actually we're gonna want a squid to spawn somewhere around here and that's gonna be a little bit difficult i think i need to go quite a bit deeper with the water before we can actually get a squid to spawn and then we're gonna catch him when that happens uh is that actually the middle it looks fine okay so um the rest of the build oh the rest of the build is gonna be we are gonna have a floor of diorite I think at this level will be fine uh, out here and around the center thing we're gonna have like some uh, the center thing is gonna have a squid in it right as I said so that's gonna be our aquarium with a live specimen um, and then around here we will have a walkway or a floor and we're gonna have shulker boxes instead of chests for once right out here I think and they are gonna have um, fish in them that people can purchase from our fish sh farm that we built like very far a very long time ago we built a fish farm but it's time to sell those fish now uh, so I'll just put down the floor it's gonna be I'm thinking a round shop actually like circular uh, if I can make that happen that'd be great uh, but yeah I'm gonna try to I'm not gonna be able to catch a squid but I am gonna build the rest of the building around here and try to make it ready for when we get a squid. So see you in a moment. And here we have it. Um, usually I think roofs are really really hard to do they're hard to get uh, nice and and fun but i think i'm very very satisfied with how this this roof turned out um it got that shape that i wanted and it's sort of interesting i like it i like it a lot okay so the shop is also done on the inside as much as it will be for now imagine this being full of water and there's a squid sink uh, swimming around in there uh, i'm gonna work on getting that in between episodes over here we have salmon and we have puffer fish and on the other side we have clownfish which are very hard to get so they're pretty expensive and we also have regular fish uh, which are very cheap because they're so easy to get um, so that that's actually the shop let's just put up the shop license right here and we're open for business so that's perfect uh, and that will actually also be it for this episode uh, thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you back later. Bye.